There are some situations where a swarm can put a heavy load on the batch system. One of those is if your swarm is very large. Say you have a swarm of 10,000 uh, subjobs, that is 10,000 lines in your swarm command file. Each of those is treated as a separate job by the batch system, even though to you it may appear as different subjobs of one job. And there's a fair amount of overhead to the batch system in dealing with these 10,000 jobs, in scheduling them, allocating them, starting them up on a node, and uh, terminating the processes when the job ends. Likewise, a swarm which has very short jobs, like f under five minutes, there's some overhead to the batch system in starting up these jobs on a node, and sometimes the job itself takes less time than the process of scheduling it on a node, starting it up, and terminating it. In both those situations, it's a good idea to bundle your job. If you type swarm-b20-f command file, that would create a bundle, a queue of 20 processes. Those 20 processes would run sequentially on a single core. So for example, suppose you have 8,000 lines in your swarm command file. If you use the dash b20 flag, you'd get 8,000 divided by 20, which is 400 jobs in subjobs in your swarm. If you did not use the b20, you'd get a single swarm with 8,000 subjobs. The BioWolf batch system is set up to have a max of 1,000 subjobs in a swarm. So if your swarm command file has more than 1,000 commands, swarm will auto-bundle it. Here's an animation that may make the swarm bundling process a little clearer. Here's a swarm command file with a dozen commands. And here's a simulation of a cluster with some two core nodes, some four core nodes, and eight core nodes, and some parts of the cluster are busy. If I submit the swarm with swarm-b3, then swarm will break the swarm command file into groups of three commands. Each of these three commands will be put in a separate batch script so that you'd get a total of four batch scripts. Each of those batch scripts would contain the three commands sequentially, one after each other. The batch system would then allocate these batch script, these batch jobs on the cluster, and each of the commands in the original file would run sequentially, one after another, on the allocated resources. So as you can see, this would take three times as long as if they were independent, uh, if there were 12 independent subjobs in the swarm. But uh, for very large swarms, this is the only way to submit them. And it's highly recommended for short running jobs as well. So to summarize, you started off with 12 commands, 12 lines in your swarm command file. It produced one batch job with four subjobs and each subjob runs three commands sequentially. Swarm also has a test mode called dash dash devel, and that'll tell you what it would do in given any selection co collection of parameters. So here's an example. It's running swarm dash dash devel dash dash bundle 10 or dash b10 dash f and this is your swarm input command file which contains 672 commands. What this command produces is output telling you what it would do if it was submitted as a swarm. It'll have 672 commands, it'll create 68 subjobs, each command will allocate 1.5 gigabytes and one thread. That's Those are the defaults because you did not specify a dash T or dash G flag. And because of the bundle 10, it'll run 10 processes serially per subjob. And in case you're interested, this is the actual sbatch command that Swarm would run on your behalf.
but no job would actually be submitted. So if you want to see what the bundling factor does for your jobs, you can use the dash dash devel and play around with different options to see what Swarm would do. And a note about wall times for bundled swarms. Swarm will automatically multiply the wall time appropriately for a bundle. Here's an example to show that. Here's a swarm command submitting a swarm command file which contains 100 commands and this one is not bundled. There's the dash dash time flag which sets the time to two hours. So with this command you would get a swarm of 100 sub jobs each one with a wall time of two hours. Now let's bundle that same command with dash b10. In this case you'd get a swarm of 10 sub jobs that's 100 divided by 10 and each one would have a wall time of 20 hours because the swarm program will multiply your requested two hours per command by the bundle factor of 10. 